So we're going to get started. Uh, I, we have, uh, we always, for the most part, start with public comment. We have one tonight. Um, and we would, uh, her name? Lynn Laird, if you would like to come forward and make a public comment. Please state your name and your address, please. Um, Lynn Laird. Um, I have two addresses, but uh, 1190 Dean Hill Road, Monroe, 30655. Uh, my comments refer to the proposed development of Kelly Lake Estates. Uh, Mike Martin, the previous director of planning and development, required an increase in A1 minimum lot frontages from 150 feet to 200 foot minimums along a heavily traveled section of Dean Hill Road due to line of sight hindrances. For reasons of safety and neighboring lot size consistency, we are asking this commission to require the same for a newly planned development along the same stretch of Dean Hill Road. A petition has been signed by nearly all neighbors, each currently with 200 foot 200 foot frontages or greater, requesting this commission to respect their concerns and pre existing lot sizes and alter the A1 zoning in this area. The new director of planning and development has stated the authorization to make the same zoning change as her predecessor for any reason, safety or consistency, has been revoked. Uh, Chairman Thompson, presumably on his own, without debate amongst other commissioners, uh, replied to each petitioner that the development was, with, was within compliance and would not come before the board. The Board of Appeals and the Board of Commissioners website state that they will act in the best interest of the safety and welfare of the county. In this instance, the current 150-foot lot frontage does not act in the best interest of the Dean Hill community. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to drive along Dean Hill Road. Please do so before you green light Kelly's Lake Estates. We ask that this commission reinstate the precedent of 200 foot minimums for road frontage at Kelly's Lake Estates. I have two related concerns if I still have time. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that no provision exists for current property owners to have a legal say in what goes on in their backyard if a looming development complies with the existing zoning. They have no say in their safety or their welfare or how the development will impact their current value. An appeals process needs to exist for these property owners. And last, the 2017 Walton County Comprehensive Plan for Rural Residential Zoning says, Open space and master plan developments are encouraged to preserve green space and retain rural characteristics of the county. Kelly's Lake Estates, as submitted, does not. It is hoped that this development will be filled with ecologically sensitive folks because as you clear the way for people to build houses in these beautiful woods, you are pushing out some of the great blue herons some migrating mergansers, the majestic loblollies, the native azaleas, the trophy white-tailed deer, and flocks of wild turkeys. And as Joni Mitchell says, when you pave paradise and put up endless ordinance-complying minor subdivisions, your rural paradises will soon be gone. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, um, we have a presentation tonight from Maldon Jenkins on the audit of the next set of five departments, and we're going to do that now, and then we'll open the meeting to the Pledge of Allegiance and invocation. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I'm honored to uh, introduce these two fine people, uh, Maldon and Jenkins. Uh, we have Tim Evans passing the booklets out, and Kate Russell behind me. Um, Kate. Uh, is a native of this area. She grew up in, I guess, Winder area. 
And uh, she's held a variety of positions with the Georgia Department of Econom Economic Development, has years of experience in all aspects of government planning and operations. And uh, Tim is a native of Griffin. He's got 20 years executive experience with the Georgia Department of Labor, where he was chief operating officer. Um, he's had uh, various national and state advisory organization positions. And it's just a pleasure and an honor to introduce these two. They're going to give uh, their report on phase two of the operational assessments for departments. Thank you. Good evening. And thank you, Chairman, for giving us this opportunity to provide a brief update on the results of phase two of our operational performance audit across the county. So we just want to kind of give you a high-level overview. There is a full detailed report that will be made available with lots more information about our process and what we found, but wanted to give you the highlights this evening. So phase two covered five county departments. It covered animal control, E911, elections, emergency management, and fire and rescue. And in a minute, Tim will kind of cover the specifics of what we looked at for each of these departments. But this is part of a broader operational performance assessment that y'all charged us with. We are looking at all county departments over the coming year, and we're breaking it up into phases to kind of make it a little more manageable to give you all of these recommendations. So the last time we spoke to you was in June of 2021. That's when we gave you an update on phase one, which as a reminder was water, public works, facilities and risk management, and parks and recreation. And then in July of 2021, we kicked off phase two with these five additional departments. And overall, you know, this, was, this is the first step in a much larger process. You know, we can come in and we're gonna take a look and you have a detailed report with our recommendations. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna help you leverage those recommendations and think critically about the direction the county can move based on what we're seeing and the direction and the strategic mission that you as a board want to move forward in. So I'd like to turn it over to Tim and he can go over the specifics of what we covered in this phase and kind of an overview of what we found in these departments. Thank you again for inviting us uh, to give you this update. Uh, I'm on page five of the handout that um, I provided. Just to give you a, a brief reminder of the approach that we took with this audit, uh, for the in-state departments, we basically took a snapshot of the current state, including the operating environment, the organizational structures, trying to identify what's working well, what may need improvement, and if there's any potential areas of risk or concern. Uh, we tried to identify areas that may need replicating throughout the county and uh, make recommendations uh, for improvements or enhancements to the operations. On the next page, it's just a brief overview of the approach that we take within Malden and Jenkins called the Compass Transformation Methodology. It breaks it down into four specific steps. The first, inventory to identify the current state. The second, to strategize is to create a conceptual plan. The third stage is to mobilize, where we create the tactical plan. And the fourth is to execute, identifying basically how to operationalize that plan, giving us a path forward. In slide number seven, uh, that's where we, we broke each phase into the four steps. Initializing and planning, we gather the information, we conduct interviews of staff, we review data, copious amounts of data that's provided by the in-scope departments, and then validation and reporting is where we create the draft reports based on all of the interviews and the data that's been provided to us. On page eight is where we've identified the tasks involved in ultimately creating those observations and recommendations. And those can be based on the org charts, it could be based on governing documents, financial information, policies, contracts, uh, the 40 interviews for those in-scope departments that we conducted, as well as job shadowing. On slide number nine is where we're getting into the creation of those observations and recommendations. And that's basically the heart of what's provided for each of the department directors for the in-scope departments. Those recommendations can be based on workflow, structures, policies and procedures, technology, budget recommendations, uh, performance measurements, and even um, training and uh, cross-training. So I'll turn it back over to Kate for the conclusion. 
So overall, we found that these departments are operating efficiently. There's nothing too scary. Y'all aren't in, gonna end up in the AJC next week for anything scary going on in these departments. But there are still some opportunities and there are always gonna be opportunities. And so we've outlined those through our recommendations. Some of them are gonna be specific to the departments we looked at, but some of them are gonna challenge you at the county level to think bigger about opportunities you have to make change and think innovatively about the future of the county and how it operates. So once you get these detailed reports, really take a look at them, really read through our summaries of what each of these departments do so that you understand our recommendations in that context. And then once you've kind of wrapped around it, as a commission, really think about what it's gonna to take to implement these recommendations. Work with these department directors, you know, challenge them where the ownership is gonna lie in the department to make changes and updates. And also think about the resources that your departments are gonna to need to make these changes. You know, nothing exists in a vacuum and there are very few things in this life, especially in government, that are gonna be free. So think strategically as a group about what that may take moving forward to help these departments improve and become innovative. And then I really want to commend you as a commission and chairman and the department directors. This process was fantastic for us because you set the tone at the top. You encourage staff to talk to us and to be honest and forthcoming with us about what's working well in their departments and where they see those opportunities for efficiencies or additional resources. And that makes our job easier, right? Because they're being honest with us. They're giving us everything we need to do a holistic look at what's going on in the county so we can bring those things back to you in an open and transparent way. So we finished phase two. And then on phase three, which is noted on page 12, with your okay, we're excited to kick off our next phase. We've identified working with the chairman five departments to prioritize for phase three. We'd like to look at clerk of superior court, emergency medical services, information technology, planning and development, and the sheriff's office. And we will apply this same methodology, this same process, this data-driven and insight driven from your staff to understand what's going on in those departments so we can give you another detailed report of what's working well, where they're succeeding, and where there are these opportunities for efficiency and improvement. And that's it for us. We're happy to answer any questions or after you get the final report, happy to come do a more detailed debrief for you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? We will have the detailed report for you uh, when will we have the printout? What I looked at was not final. Uh, we'll get that to you shortly when printed versions will for distribution okay. as well. And uh, I like paper copies. I know you're going to send me on the internet, but I like to go through. As a former historian, I'm here for the archival paper versions. Okay, today. very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all so much. <clears throat> okay, if everyone would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and we will have an invocation after the pledge. Give me a minute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for everyone that come out tonight and Please watch over them and keep them all safe as they, we travel home tonight. Please be with us and help us to make the right decisions for the county. And please watch over our troops as some of them are being deployed around the, the nation. Be with them and their families. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, I call our meeting to order and on the roll call item, let it be noted that everyone is present. And gentlemen, you have the agenda in front of you. Are there any additions, deletions, or anything that you want to add to the agenda? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the agenda. Motion of agenda be adopted. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further questions on the agenda? Otherwise, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose? Passes unanimous. Sharna, we'll jump right into planning and zoning. All right. Our first case is approval of CU21 
12-0003. This is a conditional use for an event facility. The applicant and owner is Bruce W. Verge, Jr. The property is located at 4750 Snows Mill Road and Mount Carmel Church Road. It's in District 4. Um, as I said, the applicant is requesting a, this building is an existing building be used for an event facility for weddings, birthdays, things like that. There was no opposition at the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission recommended approval, and it was unanimous. Okay, thank you. I'm going to open a public hearing on this uh, application, and is the owner here would like to come up and tell us what he's going to do? Good evening, commissioners, chairman. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Bruce Verge. Um, it's 15 acres. It's up there on the map highlighted. I currently live directly across the street. I own 85 acres directly across it. And I'm also in the process tomorrow closing the 45 acres behind it and on the other side of it. So basically I would surround pretty much besides one little piece. I have talked to the neighbors out there. Um, I do know them. Most of them are in support, everyone that I spoke to. I allow them to use the facilities for either children weddings or birthday parties, um, different things like that. And I'm just trying to get this where it's all um, due process, where everything's correct. I don't think anyone's here to oppose it. Um, we'll find out in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see anybody. <laughs> I don't think anyone's here to pose it, so I'm just, if you can grant me permission, and I do appreciate um, the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do any of the commissioners have a question for the applicant? Hear none. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there? I would like to say something, too. And this is a positive thing. Our roads out there, whoever's doing these county roads, is absolutely amazing. I've been a around a lot of roads and different roads. John, is he you want to take a well, bite? I mean, whoever, I mean, what I'm saying is the roads, it looks like there's people that care that are putting them in. They put the grass, it almost looks like they're putting um, turf in, and they're very pleasing to drive from and to work and out there on those county roads. So that's whoever's, and that's from everyone that I see working out there. Very good, very professional, and I do appreciate that out there. All right. And if you'd like to redo mine, you could put it on the, All right. on the maps. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, is there anyone here in opposition to this rezoning? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this and ask the board to make a recommendation. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Commissioner Bradford to approve. Second. Two or three seconds. Pick one. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item 4.2. Approval of Z21120002. Rezone one acre from B1 to M1 for stone fabrication. The applicant and owners are Mr. and Mrs. Islami. Property is located on Nathan Boulevard. This is in District 1. The applicant owns a fabrication shop which does granite countertops, and they would like to move their business here. At the Planning Commission, there was no opposition, and the motion was recommended for approval, unanimous, for stone fabrication shop for countertops. Okay, thank you. I'll open the public hearing on this application. Is the owner here would like to come up and tell us? Not that Sharna didn't tell us what you're going to do, but this is the process. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jevdat Islami. Uh, the purpose of rezoning this property is uh, basically we want to open our fabrication granite shop. We've been uh, in this business since 2004, and we think uh, Nathan Boulevard is actually a perfect area for us to have a uh, granite fabrication shop. Um, we do a lot of work around this area, and I think we'll definitely make a lot of people happy. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board? Thank you, Ms. Sami. Is there anyone here in opposition to this 
rezone. Seeing none, I'll close, close the public hearing and ask for a motion on this item. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we approve. We have a motion from Commissioner Warren. Second. Second from Commissioner Banks. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 4.3. Four point three is approval with conditions of Z two one one two zero zero five and two zero zero six. This is to rezone um, acreage from A two to R one to create buildable lots. The applicant is Reliant Homes, owner TMFT Lot Investments LLC. Property is located at forty five hundred Bay Creek Road um, and forty five twenty Bay Creek Road. This is in District Two. The applicant, as I said, would like to rezone, and it's these two parcels. It's this one and this one, so these two. And they have proposed some conditions. And I'll go ahead and list these conditions, and, this, and the board, uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval with these conditions. Um, number one, minimum heated square footage of the homes to be 2,400 square foot. The minimum roof pitch is 812, front and side yards to be sodded, driveways to be constructed on concrete, garage to be side entry, plant five two-inch two, two caliber trees on each lot prior to the CO. They will use 30-year architectural shingles. They will provide a water table to be a height to the bottom of the windows on the front of the house to be a minimum of 18 foot, and that'll be on the front side. 18 inches. I mean, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be really wild. 18 foot, 18 inches. Yes, sir. And uh, one thing that um, that we failed to mention at the planning commission is that these they have the frontage at the road, but at the 50 foot setback, they they need a variance from 150 to 133 and 150 to 135. The third lot, there's three lots total. The third lot meets the 150 foot. Um, we had two people that spoke at the Planning Commission. Um, one was concerned about her business beside of it, and, and she wanted a fence. Um, and then the other, once he realized it was three houses, he just said, I'll sit down. So. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sharna. I'll open the public hearing on this application. And Mr. Butler. Uh, my name is Ned Butler, representing Reliant Homes, address 574 Conyers Road in Loganville. Um, as Sharna stated, we have just over three acres that we're proposing to go from A2 to R1 so that we can get three just over one acre lots. It'll match the lots that Nathan Caswell had done across the street many years ago. Uh, we have Stone Creek subdivision behind us that are 0.2 acre lots. The B2 just north of us, which is a Pooch Palace and a landscape facility. Uh, we've talked to them about the fence. We've offered to pay for half the cost of the fence because it will help us. We'll most likely build a fence when we build it for a homeowner, but we just don't want to make that a condition of zoning. Um, <clears throat> I've told Mr. I think it's Calvin on the other side that when we start building out there, we'll look at the tree stand and if there's some open areas, we'll plant some evergreen trees. Again, don't want to make that a condition of closing. Talk with, well, left him several messages on the phone and I've got pictures of the stand of trees between our two properties. He's pretty well buffered uh, there as well. Um, and then in consideration of going from A2 to R1, we propose these eight conditions which are above and beyond what's required in A2 or R1 zoning. Okay, I got uh, one question. Yes, sir. And I used to build in the day, but what's What's your water table language that you're using there? It's um, a brick or rock uh, facade on the front that goes up to the bottom of the windows. Goes up to the, so that's the accent the I accent. used to call it. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Butler, y'all are okay with all the conditions put on by the planning zone? We, we presented the okay. rezone with those conditions, so yes. Okay, thank you, Nan. Is there anyone here uh, in opposition to this request? Boy, it's quite nice. So, uh, 
Hearing none, I'll, I'll close the public hearing on this request and entertain a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve with the condition that was put on by the plan and zoning, and I'll leave it up to the property owner of the dog kennel. They were worried that the people might be upset with dog barking, but whoever buys a house got to know that there's a kennel next to it when they buy it. So a fence is not going to stop a dog bark. Well, are, are you... I'm going to put on as the one from the planning zone. So you're making a recommendation to approve it as... Approve with the conditions of the planning zoning. Only. That's presented, the conditions that's presented. Right. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Banks made a motion to approve it with these conditions that's presented. Second. We have a second from Commissioner uh, Shellnut. Any further discussion? I'd like to say one thing. Ned, we took a bus tour in the county a couple, well, maybe three, four weeks ago. And I'd just like to commend y'all for what y'all do, the way it looks in Walton County. Y'all have got the best looking subdivision and you're in the top one or two for the for the houses. So thank y'all for trying to do good in Walton County. All right. Uh, with that being said, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of this application and the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, 4.4, .4, please. Approval of Z2112007. <laughs> Rezone 2.26 acres from A1 to B3 for a pest control company and outside storage. The applicants are Ben and Kylie Myers. The owners are Howard and Brenda Bodkin. Property is located at 587 Highway 78 and on Tommy Dillard Road. This is in District 4. Um, the applicant owns a pest control business that they would like to move their business there. There's two entrances on this property. There's one on 78, and then there's one on Tommy Dillard. They want to use the rear entrance on Tommy Dillard and will not be accessing on 78. Um, they want to have the clear the lot to put up a fence and um, ground cover millings for some parking. There's a garage that they will work out of, and there's a house that they want to use for an office. There was no opposition, and the motion to approve was unanimous. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here who would like to come forward? Thank you. My name is Ben Myers, and um, we bought this property a month ago, so we're now the owners. And um, like she said, we're wanting to use the house that you see there facing 78 for the pest control business. And then we have the rear entry. We also bought the lot beside it. It's not highlighted, but it's in here too, but you see. The vacant lot beside it? Yep, on, on Tommy Dillard. On Tommy Dillard, this one right here. Right there, yes. Yep. Yep. So that's combined. Okay. So, so all that's included in this? Yes. Okay, very good. Right. And so basically we want to clear the back lot. Um, if you see the property to the left of that lot, that's currently all outside storage. Um, and then to the right, they sell, you know, outside buildings. This outside storage. One of them's B2, one's B3. Um, currently, our property's A1, and we want to move it to B3. So um, basically, it's touching, you know, the same, same type thing we're wanting to add in the middle um, there in the back. So. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Do y'all plan on closing the entrance on 78? Is that the plan for um, using just the entrance in the back? Is that what your thoughts are? Or? Um, we don't know about as far as closing it or what we would need to do there, but we're going to have, you know, just because it's kind of a bad spot on 78 and we don't want to have to deal with the DOT. So as far as the business, which we won't have anybody coming there, you know, that doesn't work there, but it will all just funnel in the back um, okay. as our plan, but I don't know. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Is there anyone here in opposition of this rezone? 
Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing on it and entertain a motion from the board on this one. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve for the requested business type. Okay. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Bradford, second from Commissioner Shellnut. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, 4.5. Okay. I just want to point out on this map, and you guys have a picture of the property, but it includes this, and then on this property, it includes this area right here. Just that area right in there. It doesn't include this back area, okay? So it's been cut yeah. up. It is, yes. Okay. It's going to be, let me draw this line so you can see. I didn't, like that. All right, thank you. So it's that into the road, okay. It's the left front piece? Yes, and it's on the road right there. Okay. In the, right here, and then this piece. All right. All right. So this is uh, approval with conditions of Z2112-0008. This is the rezone 18 acres, plus or minus, from A1 to M1 for steel fabrication and outside storage. The applicant is Henderson, Fabrication LLC, owner James D. Holly and Norma Billingsley. Oh, I'm sorry, it's James Billingsley and Norma Billingsley. Property is located on Highway 20, and then we have to list it as Green Road because it is a portion of that property that is on Green Avenue, excuse me, but it, like I said, it doesn't touch Green Avenue. This is in District 2. The um, applicant owns the property that is across the street right back here. And he wants to use this property for steel storage. He may put up a building in the future. He'll put up an eight foot privacy fence. He said there may be two or three trucks, um, three or four trucks. Let me slow down. There will be only trucks coming three or four times a day. Uh, they will follow all GDOT guidelines. The Planning Commission heard from several residents if there was confusion because we did have to put a sign on Green Avenue. So there was confusion that there was, might be an entrance there, but it does not touch that. I think we did get that clear at the Planning Commission. The, um, they probably still have some concerns, but that was one of the bigger things. The motion to recommend approval with the condition of a 100-foot transitional buffer around the perimeter of the development was unanimous. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here? Or would you please come forward and... Is that Copar? No. That's not over there? What is that? <clears throat> that is, it is. Yes, sir, I'm Johnny Henderson. On the other side. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm Johnny Henderson. We're just looking to rezone this so we can use it as storage, and we are right across the street. You're operating across the street where she said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, are there any questions from the board, from the owner? Yes, sir. I'm Charlie Evanson. I'm involved in the transaction. Um, I represent the Billingsleys. Um, the one condition that was put on was a 100-foot buffer, the perimeter of the property. What they would like to ask is that the 100-foot buffer be between this property and all of that that's zoned A2. There's an M, um, if you can show, the one that's M2 is right next to it on the front. There's 6.73 acres. I want to see if I can. The square. The little square right there. And they already have a 100-foot buffer. And so he's asking that he not have to have a 100-foot buffer between an M2 and an M1. Um, and on the other side, is actually, I think, B2 and B3. Right, it's yeah. been rezoned as well. Yeah, yes. they've been rezoned. Yeah. Um, so he's asking that the condition be made that he has the 100-foot buffer. He'll have the fence around the whole property right. with impervious um, uh, screening, but that the 100-foot buffer would be between him <laughs> and those properties that are zoned A2. Okay. okay. Instead of... I think they just threw it out as the perimeter and didn't think about the fact that you've got business in the Jason. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application? Please, uh, one at a time, come forward and uh, state your name and your address and uh, try not to repeat the same problems from each one of you. Uh, we, we get it, we take it down when it's brought out. So thank you, sir. Thank you. My name is Ken Archer and I reside at 3750 Green Avenue. And I have two concerns, uh, not necessarily I realize the property on Georgia 20 is going to go M1, M2, ever, you know, all the, the codes. But my concerns are this. I have a horse farm on Green Avenue. I bought 26 years ago. We have horses. And my understanding with the property on the corner of the property is in the floodplain. It runs into a creek that runs through my property. And one condition I would like to see is somebody do a study to see what type of runoff we're going to have to come through that creek. Uh, if it's, you know, clear for horses or, you know, animals to drink, but if it's a problem uh, of some kind of toxic runoff, I would, you know, I'd just like to know that. And the other condition that I would like to see, they've got a condition on there about a 100-foot buffer, and you just brought that up around the whole perimeter of the property. I have two fine neighbors that doesn't affect me, and I would like to say that it doesn't affect me, but it does affect them that they step out the back door with a 100-foot buffer from their beautiful homes. Is there'll be an eight-foot fence, steel fence, looking at. I think that if they give them a 300-foot buffer on that side, the rest of the properties, as you said, that's going to, uh, you know, some type of commercial, do away with a 100-foot buffer. I wouldn't care, but for them, the 300-foot buffer would make a big difference in, you know, the home that they've been in for, gosh, 20, 25 years, 26 years, and just just to give them, because they bought the property like I bought it for agriculture to, you know, to, to live there for a long time, and just, just think about a 300-foot buffer, which to me would be, they, they may not even agree with that, but to me it would give them an opportunity to still have some peace on some agriculture land. That's all, all right. I've Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. With the next. My name is Sid Gordon. I live on Bailey Circle, and my property is adjacent to the proposed rezoning. Um, I just made some notes about the application that they had to file. And um, like Ken said, we moved there 26 years ago, and this was supposed to be our last home to live in. I just retired last year. I, I, I ran a small landscape company. And um, I enjoy being outside, and, and I enjoy the woods. Um, in, in answer to the question that they had, to, the, the sections for the standard review of questions, it says the extent of which property values are diminished by this particular rezoning restrictions, it, it is diminishing our residential property. Nobody wants to live next to a manufacturing facility, particularly a steel facility. Just a few months ago, they went ahead and approved the wood manufacturing of trusses, which is adjacent also to my property. And since they're rezoning from M1, from, uh, uh, excuse me, A1 to, to M1, then I'll lose the buffer that we had there between the two, which he just alluded to, Mr. Mr. Henderson did. He doesn't want to have to do that. And I know by the regulations, you don't have to do that. But I'm the one who's losing the, 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 the the land there, I'm the one that's losing the view, I'm the one that's losing everything. The second problem that I do have is it is in a flood zone and I'm not sure that any impact study, is, environmental in, impact study has been done on that, particularly with steel manufacturer going on there. So our residential property is gonna be hurt by this. I also believe the health and safety is, is a question here because He's on the other side of a two-lane highway that has a 55-mile-an-hour speed limit, 
and he's going to be pulling tractor trailers across the road. He says three or four times a day, but what if his business is successful? He's right across from Coparts, which has already hundreds of trailers going in and out of there already. And the DOT can't address it, but I'm hoping that you won't approve this because of the safety to the people there in that community. Uh, as far as increasing the value, of course it's going to increase the tax value, but it's not increasing our residential value. And tax uh, businesses do not vote for the people in this county. Yes, they bring money, but the only reason they're willing to pay so much more money and pay the taxes is because they benefit from it. As a resident, I'm not benefiting any from this rezoning. Um, the uh, floodplain is a concern. I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. I already mentioned that. But um, I'm asking you that you not approve the M1. As I said, with an M1 and an M2 there, there is, there is no requirement for a buffer between them, and, and I'm losing that space. I was told by my neighbor, Trent Pippins, which, who could not come tonight because he said his daughters were sick, that if they put the fence there, they would put the fence behind a row of cypress trees to cover the eight-foot metal fence that they're going to install. That's a small concession, but it sounds to me like that was not part of the deal, and they're not, they're not saying they're going to do that. If they're going to put an a eight-foot metal fence there, which they're metal fabricators, it would be nice to look at trees, nice set of trees, if you're going to do the buffer. And, of course, Ken's asking for more of a buffer, and I'd love to have more of a buffer. I don't know if you've ever done that, extended a buffer, but that would be awesome with me if you gave me more than a 100-foot buffer in that area. I think that's about it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, who's the next one? He covered what you had to say. Okay, thank you for that uh, in time of the meeting. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to this? If not, I'll close the public hearing on this and entertain conversation, recommendations, or whatever from the board. Mark, could you speak in your mic, please? <coughs> Mr. Henderson, could you or Charlie? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was just going to say, he's going to ask some questions, so it'll correct himself, but if they want to. If they want to rebut this, you're right. I'm sorry. <coughs> if if y'all want to rebut, I'll reopen the public hearing because you do get a chance to come back and rebut. Thank you, Council. Again, uh, my name is Charlie Evans, and I just wanted to say one thing about um, property values. I wanted to give it as evidence. <clears throat> Last year, in January, January 21st, we closed on the sale of uh, 2140 Huntington Drive, Loganville, Georgia. It sold for $5,100 above the list price, sold for $240 thousand dollars which is hundred and forty eight dollars a square foot <clears throat> prices are up about 18 to 20 percent in this area that house now that would be hundred and seventy dollars a square foot there was no <clears throat> sold in four days there was no dimin <clears throat> uh, diminishment to the uh, property value of that house and I want to show you that it's that house is less than 300 feet from the FESCO building, steel fabrication, okay? So we didn't have any problem selling that house. So I would advise you and tell you that you're not going to see a diminishment of the property values because of that. The people who bought it were aware that FESCO was there. We had a discussion about it. They came to see and hear what they did. And they bought the house and paid $5,100 above <clears throat> the list price. So that's, oh, and I did do a measurement. Um, I've got this. 
from Mr. Gordon's house uh, 336 feet to the property line with his buffer is 446 feet to the buffer and to where the building is proposed would be 860 feet from Mr. Gordon's house and from Mr. Tripp's house <coughs> 423 feet to the property line and it's trees between their house and the property line and that total to where the proposed future building might be uh, 964 feet and like I say this house in uh, Huntington Ridge was less than 300 feet from the um, Fesco building where they do steel fabrication all right yes sir all right <clears throat> Basically, there's three houses, Shannon, you might answer this, basically three houses involved here on Bailey Circle. Could you point those three houses out where they spoke from, please? There. Yeah, that one. There and there. I don't, well, there, is there a house on that one? There's a barn. Okay, but it's a potential residential. Those three right there. Okay. And the floodplain you've got in blue. Right. Back here on the back side. Is it running water or just wet? No, it's just floodplain. Just okay. wet. Mm -hmm. And those are protected. That's something we do during the development process. Okay. Are you okay, the 100-foot buffer all the way around the property, I don't see any need in, in doing that on the B2. B3. But I would like to add a little bit to those lots that touch these three residential. Would y'all have a problem with that if we go up to 100 and... When you say a buffer, I mean, you're talking about leaving trees? Leaving trees from the property line that far. Um, and so the fence would have... If we, could go, if we could go to 125 feet... What his question was, are, is the fence at the property line or inside the buffer? I would say the fence would be inside the buffer. Sean, is that correct? I would rather I'd rather the fence be 125 feet from the property line, and and then if y'all would plant Leland cypresses on those three property owners, that would kind of buffer the sound and the sight. Also, would you have a problem with that? Okay. What What's the distance now? Did you say 125 feet or 100? If you went 100, instead of 100 foot buffer, just do 125 feet on those three lots and add the Leland cypresses to it. Well, that would protect the site. There, there, and there, so it's the length, that length. Something foot. That's how far. And if we, I can measure it. If we, if we could just... 800. If we could just, um, you know, if it's really <clears throat> thick in trees, um, it already is. along the property line there, it's... What, know, kind, of, what kind of tree growth is already there? Yeah. It's mostly pines. <clears throat> so that's about 860 foot. Um, but what we could do is if there's, we can go out there and look. If there's any area that it would benefit the neighbors to add trees, if you just make that your motion. So that way they're not taking down trees to add trees. No, I don't want to we take can down trees. Add trees where it's sparse. <laughs> Okay, and we had already talked about this. You don't have a problem with uh, business hours being seven to seven, or right? Okay, six days a week. Yes. Cypress, hundred. All right. So if we go to one hundred twenty-five feet, y'all okay with that? On those three, on those three lots. Yeah. Mr. Henderson. Yes. And we take the buffer off on the other, all the way around. We take the buffer off. Okay. Now. Okay. And with no sure. <laughs> <coughs> Let me make sure. So the property that's remaining back here, all of this, all of this piece right here, that's, that's going to still be agricultural. A2. So yes. So you may, you know, want to leave the buffer right here and right here. Um, but all of the line. B, all the B two and B three. Right. It's, one. it's not required by code, and yeah. That's B. That's, that's already B2 or you're B3. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. So yeah. he wouldn't need one and, there. Yeah. Oh, and, on that the, one, and that one's already been rezoned. Rezoned. Yeah. So yeah. he really wouldn't have a buffer on, that side on this entire all. side. Right. Just this back area and then plant the trees where needed over here. Okay. And, and the back area, he don't need tree the Leland's on the back. Right. 125 
buffer with trees where needed, and then a hunter buffer along the rear, the southern portion That's of the lot. Right. Okay. Y'all okay with that? I guess I will be, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, but <laughs> that's a lot of area to give up, a lot of space. Well, the code requires 100 foot anyway. Right. So you're only given 25 feet. Only, only give, well, you're giving up 25 feet on the three lots is all. On the three lots, yeah. That one side. The three residents. 125 foot with no trees, though. Would that be fair? I mean, Wait, say it again. With no Leland's or Cypress or no planting other trees, if you leave that much woods in between there, the fence is going to be green anyway. What, what Sean had said, if the vegetation is heavy enough, we're not going to remove trees to plant Leland's. Right. If, if the vegetation's had enough to form the buffer, right. uh, that, that would be, you know, purpose because half of them is going to die because the sun won't get to them anyway. That's exactly right. And we haven't been making that a practice when there's, uh, when there's existing buffer, natural buffer. Let me take this down so you can see. I think what Sean is saying is that they would only split the trees if there are areas of gaps. If there's area gaps, if there's the only place you have to do that. Okay. And I don't think you're going to have any. Right. I agree with that. It's just 125 on that side and doing away with the buffer. All the way the rest of the round, really. Right. Well, except the, yeah. Is it still 100 foot on the back so side? have to keep it on the back yeah. side. It's just That's 100 right. foot. Okay. Because you're adjoining A2. All right. So All right. Now forever hold your peace. Well, I'll agree to it. All right, now, uh, do we? Well, we got to close the, do we allow the uh, opposition to address this? I think so. So we get it, let everybody have a say. All right, what they're proposing uh, to the opposition is those three houses increase the buffer to 125 feet, and if there's any areas that you can see through to plant the Leland Cypress there and to have the fence at the edge of that 125 foot buffer. Uh, so you're not looking at the eight foot fence, you're looking at the woods. Uh, does anyone want to come up and address that or <clears throat> oppose that or what? Uh, it, if you don't, that's what's being proposed right now. And please do, sir. Okay. I did not realize that the other properties had already been rezoned. I thought they still had to go through the zoning process. But in so doing, he gains all that property on that side of 100 foot. On the opposite side? On the outside, can I pull the map back up, please? There's it's no, already. There's yeah. no requirement for a buffer between commercial and commercial. And commercial. When we started this, all that was still zoned A1. I did not realize it had been rezoned since this application was made. No, mm -mm. It's, it was before that. Well, see, what I saw online see, wasn't. This is, this is B2 and B3 right here. This is A1, sorry. Yes, sir. That it's one's a, a, it's one. a similar color. Yeah, that's where. No, uh, it's it, that is a one. This would this been, one. This one has been rezoned. The map hasn't been updated yet. That's my. That's exactly what I said. You're exactly yes. right. Okay. So he's gaining all of that property on that side, uh, where he doesn't have to use a buffer now anymore. That's why we would like for it to be more on our side. The buffer to be greater, if that uh, makes sense. He's gaining. I, I understand what you're saying. But the main purpose of the buffer is not to see what's on the other side of it. Yes, sir. And, and a 100 foot buffer is a very large buffer, especially if it's heavily that's wooded. The county, that's the minimum county requirements. Yeah, that's what we, it's the minimum. we put on. Yes, sir. 
Yes, but uh, it's still a very strong buffer, a uh, hundred feet. In my opinion, I like I said, I used to build and develop. Most of the buffers were 25 feet uh, on commercial and residential, but you had to plant the Leland cypresses and stuff. Yes, sir. But, uh, <laughs> the the 125 feet, if it's if it's grown up trees and it's a, mix, and it's a mix of pines and hardwoods. Pines and hardwoods. Yes, and it's pines give you buffer during the winter time when the hardwoods drop the leaves. Yes, uh, but uh, I think Commissioner Banks just trying to come to some. He knows that this property fronts 20, and they got a business across the street, and. Uh, and it, and trying to come up to deal. please everybody and and not it's, not please everybody. I understand. Um, it's an eight foot fence. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And the fence won't be on the property line. It'll be at, on the other the side of the buffer, yes, sir. I understand. which which would give aesthetically uh, a whole lot better look than having an eight foot fence. I'm in landscaping. I, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm trying to get as much as I can get. I understand. I understand. This is my home. This is where I wanted to retire and live. That's yes. why I moved to Walton County because yes, sir. it was all agricultural there, it except is. for the church. But it's still zoned agricultural. I don't mind having a church next door. They're good people, and I only have to worry about it on Sunday. Yes, sir. Were there any other conditions that were supposed to be put on this? Uh, I don't. I don't. I didn't see anything in here. No. Uh, you you said something about the hours. The hours. Seven to seven. Seven to seven. Uh, Monday through Saturday. No Sundays, right? Monday through Saturday. Okay. It, it, and that's all the conditions. That and the 125 foot buffer. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else in opposition? Uh, we still have a fairly lengthy agenda. I'm going to close this public hearing and entertain uh, a motion on this rezone. My head's spinning. Let me see if I can word this. All right. I'm going to make a motion that we approve this rezone with the conditions. Hours will be from 7 to 7, Monday through Saturday. 125-foot buffer on the three home residential homes on Bailey Circle. Eight-foot fence will be inside the 125-foot buffer. And Leland Cypress would be planted anywhere that there's sight line that would affect these homeowners. And I'll leave that up to the planning zoning. I'll put that in your lap. I'll put that on planning zoning to make that decision. That's the conditions. Okay. We have a motion. Seven to seven working hours Monday through Saturday. Second. And we have a second from Commissioner Shellnut. Any further discussion? All, all those favor? Yo. Excuse me, excuse me. We have a motion and a second, and I'm calling the vote. What was understood up here, planning zoning will take care of, okay? All right, I'm calling the vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Thank you all for coming. Uh, nobody got exactly what they wanted on that last one, but uh, it, was, it was better than it was first proposed, I think. So, all right, thank you all. Okay, we're still in planning and development. We have some amendments to the Walton County Land Development Ordinance. And Sharna, you're still on the stage. I am here. Errata number one is going to be an amendment to Article 4, Part 3, Section 160, to add guidelines for lots that are five acres in the A, A1, A2, and R1 with a minimum frontage mm. of 40 foot to be allowed. Um, this would eliminate the variance procedure. We would we have it worded as such that the setbacks would be on the part of the lot where it widens out the buildable part, and at least 40 foot at the road. Okay. Now this is not going to promote someone doing a bunch of flag lots no. and then developing the right. rest. That's right. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Errata number two, this is just a little bit of um, administrative cleanup. We have got uh, in Article 6, RV parks and vacation camps. So what we're doing is adding verbiage. I actually just copied what's in the national, the NAICS code that dictates right. what you can do and listed those so that there is a separation. One's an RV park, one's for camp campers. Um, and then I can answer any questions at the end. Errata number three is um, an amendment to Article 4, Part 2, Section 120, the Open Space Conservation Development Overlay. This amendment will require a minimum lot size with sewer of 15,000 square foot, which is, that's the normal for a sewer. That's, that's almost a half acre. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, with so sewer. A, a two acre density is all you'd be able to get. Uh, One, two, two dwellings per acre. I mean, one acre difference. That's exactly where there is sewer. Uh, we want to keep. A, it would be. And what's a minimum lot width still? 100 foot. 100 foot. 100 foot. Okay. And errata number four is the same. This is for the R&D overlay that we have. Changing those, they don't actually have a set lot width at this time. This will make it 100 foot. It'll make the minimum lot size 15,000 square foot. It'll be 100 foot everywhere but cul-de-sacs, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the distance between buildings would go from 20 foot to 30 foot. I like that too. Thank you. All of these were approved by the Planning Commission. Okay. I enter entertain a motion to approve these amendments to our uh, land development ordinance. So moved. I'll second. Yeah, motion and a second. All any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass unanimous. Annexation town of between. This is just um, a one hundred percent annexation. Requested by the, the property record. owner? Yes, sir. And it's adjacent to the existing That is correct. City limits? Yes. Okay, entertain a motion for this annexation. So moved, uh, Mr. Chair. I right, have a motion by Commissioner Warren. Second by Commissioner Banks. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Oppose. That passes unanimous. Uh, we have Walton County Speed Zone Ordinance Update. That's not yours. Uh, that probably came from the sheriff's office. It, it did, and the... Uh, of course, with state DOT, there's 16 pages of our roads and the recommended speed limit. Very few of them changed except for some congested areas. And it's recommended by the Sheriff's Department. What they're wanting to be able to do is this is the hoops you have to jump through to be able to use speed detection devices on the road. So we're going to enable them to give y'all a ticket if y'all speed by passing this. So. Uh, uh, I'll entertain, I'll entertain, you don't know how many complaints I get about somebody speeding by their house on a county road. So, uh, entertain a motion that we approve this. Like a motion to approve. You got a motion by Commissioner Dixon. Second. Second by Commissioner Adams. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you have your administrative consent agenda. Are there any questions? Uh, I'd like to make a note, the inmate housing agreement with Washington County, uh, as all of you are aware, our jail is grossly uh, overpopulated right now. And we were housing our overflow in Oglethorpe County. Well, Oglethorpe's gonna shut their jail down. So we had, uh, Joe Chapman had to find another county that would accommodate our overflow. And it's very expensive, but we have to do it right now. And uh, He's wanting an agreement down with Washington County. Any questions on the administrative consent agenda? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve it. Make a motion to approve. Have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. You have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose, unanimous. All right, we have more budget amendments. With everything going up out there in this world, it's hard to budget. And uh, 
you uh, go to buy a pickup that you budgeted sixty thousand dollars for it's sixty five by the time you get it so um, there's three amendments uh, none of them affect fund balance the first one is what the chairman was referring to uh, there were two pickups bought by budget unit 4220 they were approved in the budget but the price went up and so this is to move money from one account the equipment account to the vehicle account to you know pretty much even uh, so there'd be no effect on fund balance the second one uh, you remember last month there was a grant a judicial grant from the American Rescue Fund it was approximately three hundred eleven three hundred eleven thousand dollars there's an addition that has been made to that uh, that grant um, the uh, probate judge would like to have an associate probate judge uh, in order to do that they would need to appoint the current senior clerk she would get an eleven thousand dollar per year allowance the grant is renewable each year and it's a three-year grant so the grant will pay for it but yes, we have to amend the budget now yeah. yes sir okay uh, the last one uh, budget unit 3300 um, similar to the first budget uh, amendment uh, they were over on one account so they want to transfer from another account that's not being used to wash that out so there'd be no effect on fund balance for that <laughs> okay any questions from Milton entertain a motion that we approve these uh, budget amendments I make a motion to approve second. I have a motion and a second any further questions all those in favor say aye, aye. opposed passes unanimous thank you upset acceptance of bids and proposals you, you should have a project length budget from an LMEG grant uh, this oh is, did I miss one I'm sorry yeah I'm sorry thank you uh, this is uh, the annual LMEG grant to do repaving resurfacing and patching jobs for the roads uh, we just need a bud to approve that in order to um, accept the grant and amend the budget okay Entertain this is a very important one. Thank you, Milton. Chairman, uh, I would like to make a motion we approve that. And at the same time, uh, I want to give some kudos to our road department. Uh, I had some some uh, residents with some issues uh, with the, the, the dirt, dirt roads this last couple of weeks and got several calls a day giving accolades to our crews for being out there getting that work taken care of. So I'd like to make a motion to approve this and just commend them for the work they're doing. All right. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Now the acceptance of bids and proposals. Um, a proposal from Ross and Associates. Who's presenting that? That's on our impact fee, correct? Tonight, if y'all have any questions, um, but this is the annual update and the monies for this are paid by impact fees. Okay. So it's no cost to the, nothing on the budget. Okay, any questions? Entertain a motion to uh, renew this proposal. So moved, Mr. Chair. All right, have a motion. Need a second? Second. Got a second from Commissioner Banks. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ross. Construction manager at risk, Walton County Public Safety Complex. Uh, Y'all want to present it. We, the CPS Partners has approved, I'll let you just tell everybody what, what it is. Uh, Good evening. Uh, so we went through a uh, publicly advertised selection process uh, for a construction manager at risk for the Walton County Public Safety Complex. It was publicly advertised. Uh, the selection of evaluation group who made the uh, uh, what's getting uh, proposed to you tonight uh, was uh, consisting of Walton County Board of Commission members, uh, Walton County staff, and sheriff's office members. So. Um, you have a proposal for uh, award of the uh, 
contract to McCarthy Barnsley, who was uh, the re recommended award from the group. Um, yeah, I think pending legal review is, is a condition on that, so. Okay. All right, any questions from the board? Is that percentage, what I see 10.97%, that's their fee, or what is that? That is not, that is not only their fee, uh, no sir. So that is inclusive of their pre-construction services. So they're actually getting involved during the design and providing constructability and cost estimating input. Uh, that also is inclusive of all of their overhead. Uh, so their staff to manage the project through the next three years. Uh, it's inclusive of their bonds and insurance, uh, which is several percent of that, that 10.97% you see. And then also their uh, construction fee, which is 3.85%. How about contingencies? Is there contingency built in as well? So they will have contingency. That is not within that 10.97%. So it's 10.97 plus contingency. Well, the contingency, by and large, will not go to McCarthy Barnsley. It will, if, if it's utilized, it'll either uh, go to trade contractors for the most part for, you know, uh, scope gaps, uh, you know, subcontractor defaults. It's all defined uh, in the contract with typical allowable, uh, well, excuse me, allowable expenses. Um, and then any unutilized funds would actually come back to the county. All right, any other questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. This is recommended. This company went through the public bid and evaluation process and is recommended by our study group to continue with this project. I entertain a motion that we approve. Um, motion approved. All right, we have a motion and second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Aye. aye. For the record, we got uh, Commissioner Bradford and Commissioner Dixon in opposition. And I want my recorded vote as positive. All right, design bill, Walton County Government Building Courtroom Renovations. Uh, and is someone here to just brief us and tell us what that is? Hank? I don't, I don't think Jeff's here, but um, pretty much the same thing Megan just said. Uh, we publicly advertised RFP uh, for the renovations at the uh, courtroom number two. Um, we received three proposals. Uh, the selection group um, reviewed those <coughs> and is recommending uh, Sunbelt Builders uh, as uh as the the firm to uh design build group design okay build group. that's right sir all right any questions right all right entertain a motion on this recommendation motion to approve all right we have a motion to approve we need a second 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 any further questions all those in favor say aye aye, aye. oppose that one passed unanimous. Walton House, Walton Courthouse, Annex One Renovations. That's the little building uh, next to the courthouse on Court Street that we've gutted, and uh, Hank has done the same thing, bid it out. And yeah, it was it was publicly bid. Uh, that was a hard bid, and uh, we got our um, bids back. I think you have the tabulation sheet uh, as part of the attachment. Uh, we're recommending. Um, that um, Hogan, Hogan yeah, construction. Hogan uh, be awarded. Yes. Uh, authorize the chairman to execute the contract subject to the county attorney's review. All right. Uh, any questions? Hey, that made the ones that did that uh, fire station down at the reservoir no. with Oakland. No, no they, they've right. never done any work for us. They're, they're a pretty big group, though. Okay. Uh, I was kind of surprised they jumped on a small project. All right. Entertain a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 
Uh, I will make one an announcement about that. Uh, the public defender is not going to go in that building. Our code department's going to move back in that building, and we're going to get the public defender back out of the courthouse where they need to be so they'll be close to the DA. And that was Sharner's idea, not mine. I won't take credit for that. All right, Walton County Water System Improvements Pre-Qualifications, Morris. <coughs> This is for the uh, two projects we have coming up, Center Hill Church Road, where we're gonna be upsizing that line, and then the Bold Springs Phase One, upsizing those lines up there using the CARES Act money. Uh, and so we're pre-qualifying, try to get away from having contractors miss their deadlines and then have a lot of complaints from customers because they're not following up the way they should. So we sent out the packages pre-qualify, we're recommending the four that you uh, see on on the uh, letter, I think, that you have from me, that we uh, pre-approve them to qualify to bid on the projects when the RFPs go out. Okay. Any questions? All right. Entertain a motion to approve the ones they're recommending. So moved, Mr. Chair. Got Bob Warren. Second. Who's second? Did we get a second? We got two. Take one. <clears throat> two of them. Sir? Oh, you got a question? <clears throat> no. no okay. All right. Thank you. I got a question. My ears are ringing. I apologize. I got a question. All right. One of the, uh, is Anderson grading? Is that? So, should Mr. I'm sorry. Should, I'm going to sustain from the You should recuse board. yourself from sustain. How should it work? He'll recuse himself if he's involved in the company okay. in the bid process. Okay. I want to make sure that's done for the record. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose <clears throat> or recuse. Mr. Shellnut, let the record show that he did not vote. Okay, Walton County Board of Appeals. We've got District 4 and District 5 that need to make a recommendation for the Board of Appeals. We'll go in alphabetical order, District 4. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Keith uh, Prather. Keith Prather. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions from the board? And for all right. the record, I forwarded Rhonda all the information and so forth, email address, address, telephone number, and so forth. Okay. We have a motion from District 4 Commissioner to... Uh, appoint, and that's his appointee, Keith Prather, to the appeals board, but we still have to approve the appointee. So I uh, need a motion to accept his appointee. Second. Thank you, All right, and a second. All those uh, in favor of this appointee say aye. 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 Oppose. <laughs> Passes. District 5. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Blake Davis. He's here tonight. I'd like to recognize him. He's in the back of the room there. I think he'll be a great addition, so I'd like to point him to the uh, Board of Appeals. All right, we have, second. we have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose? Passes unanimous. Thank you for agreeing to serve both these individuals. Okay, under discussion, uh, <clears throat> I would like to start. Do you did you update on the COVID on the agenda? Yes, All right, you got it last. If it's okay with y'all, I'd like to bring it up first and then discuss the other two because the other two may be fairly long. Today, we have 106 employees out uh, on COVID paid leave. Uh, it has drastically increased. We, we elected in April of last year uh, when the Fed stopped reimbursing us to continue to care for it, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis. I would get two or three a week most of the time, and I just approved all. Uh, these employees, we've been very good over these months since then. There's no indication that the feds are going to reimburse us at all. 
and it's approaching a hundred thousand dollars or more that we have expensed out and every employee does have med leave time and that they're not using that we're doing and I would like to suggest at least give a notice 10 days from now whatever that we're going to require them to use up their medical leave and then look at it on a one-to-one -one basis if they still have it. Uh, I know this last strain was more contagious than the other, um, but it, I, I don't want to say we're being abused by it, but we're getting more and more that run into someone with COVID and wanting to stay home and work because of that and I need feedback from you guys because uh, it's a board policy that we've been doing and I need to know we don't need to wait till next board meeting to come up with some suggestions or offerings so I'm opening it up for public discussion and that puts you in a hard spot but we have been very good uh, and I don't want them coming to work sick, but sick leave is building up, and that's what it's there for. And I think we ought to use, ask them to use their sick leave, and then if that's exhausted, then we step in and do what we've been doing. But uh, there's no need to let this bank sick leave uh, to a great amount. So, Chairman, uh, you'd still review each case you know, if, if I look, I look at each one, and I have not turned down one. Okay. Uh, most of them are tested and come in positive, or someone in their family has tested positive, and uh, but now it's beginning to be more suspicious. Some of them are now. Most of them, I'd say 95 percent, or you know, you know, someone has got it but then there's there's a few questionable ones and going over with melissa employee sick leave is accruing and they have a good amount most of them do sick <clears throat> leave and that's what it's there for um so and without the feds reimbursing us we're either gonna have to make a big change in next year's budget in the very near future or address this now. One thing that scares me a little bit about doing this is I'm afraid we'll have people that's been exposed or maybe got mild symptoms that say, I'm not using up my sick time, I'm going on to work. And then- And then getting, cause a problem. <laughs> then end up getting a really- um, Well, it's, you know, there's pros and cons, but I need direction for y'all. If you want me to keep doing what I'm doing, I'll keep doing it. Uh, it'll probably be by the end of the year, at the rate we're going, it'll be a $240,000 additional expense to the county. So the uh, question I have is what, I understand we're paying, continue to pay at regular pay, but if we not budgeted for each and every employee for the complete years it is? Uh, so is it actually in addition to what we've already budgeted for for the employee pay? Well, some of these employees, you're right, we are budgeted that amount, but they're not earning that amount, if you get what I say. We have to pay overtime in some departments to cover when an employee's out. Sheriff uh, Chapman has road patrol men working in the jail. Uh, mandatory they have to do it because so many's out with covid uh and they get extra pay when they change job descriptions uh i'm sorry until they bring somebody in our overtime is really uh getting more and more but uh all the stats are that this is starting to decline and I hope we drop, but I've never seen 109. I've never seen 50. Three weeks ago we were 55 and I thought that was high. And today I believe it's 106, 109, what it was out. Uh, we only have 834 employees 
and when you have 109 out, that's beginning to be, we need to take notice and, uh, you know, we don't want them coming to work sick and contagious, but uh, if they've just been exposed, then, you know, what do we do? A lot of people get exposed and don't get it. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I'm not. I, I got it. But uh, <laughs> now, Hey, Carl, Carl, could I ask Mr. Morris something? Yes. Is the numbers dropping in Walton County right now? All right, if, I, I know it's short notice, but when I see something jump that much that quick, I figure we at least discuss it and get some feedback. I'm happy to keep initialing them and improving them at this point, but. Uh, what's, what's what, about, what about a compromise, Mr. Chairman? What about a, could you do a day for day match? How would, would that work? One day, one day to county, and one day to employees. That's, that's today's count. Melissa can address. I'm saying, what about a one for one match? I'm saying, instead of taking the whole sick leave, one day for the county, one day for the employee, that would be like a compromise halfway. So if the person's out six days, three days for the county, three days for the employee, and then you exhaust your sick leave, and then you well, go from there. Would that be hard to track? Anything would, I think. Uh, would that be a compromise that could track? It, it, it would. It would show that we're continuing. But we're asking them to do part. I like it. That's, if one of you approve, you have been approved, and from the day they test, five days, three days, what? Uh, generally, it's twelve days. Twelve days. Uh, I thought they moved it to eight. Moved to five they, days they just, now. They just um, um, revised the CDC. Um, <clears throat> but um, as of um, today, April, from April 2021 to current, we've uh, paid out 4,509 hours. And this, um, Commissioner Bradford had mentioned about um, the leave already being on the books. The leave is still on the books as far as their sick leave. However, so this would be an additional liability. What's the, what's the average time for a person has sick leave? Just, do you have something average? I do. Well, yeah. it's all over the place. Um, Public safety um, was the top three departments, if if that helps. But they're in the most contact with right. the general public. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, you know, with the guidelines changed from the CDC and what Kirkland just mentioned, I think it would be a good compromise that we do a max six days. The county matches up to three days. So three days employee sick time, three days county time, maximum six days with the CDC guidelines changing. I feel with that. You like that? You want to make that into a motion? Effective, motion? effective March 1st. How about that? Effective March 1st. Yeah, that give, that give them a month to get for the numbers to see what they're going to do, and then that still gives them a leeway as far as I'll, dropping the numbers. I'll do whatever y'all tell me to on that. but uh, That's a compromise. That's a good compromise. All right. Is that a second with that uh, effective March 1st? Uh, you okay with that? Yep. Is that a motion you made? Yep, it's a motion. Okay. I'll okay. I'll second the motion. All right. We have a motion to do three days county and three days employee <clears throat> sick leave starting March 1st on COVID reimbursements. And just make sure, just one question. The right. county takes the first day. Let's make sure that's clear. So if it's- I'm sorry? County gets the first day, right? Yep. County gets the, I'm not that it really matters, but three days- I don't care uh, ever what you tell me. Okay. I'm just saying the county gets the or first day. Or tell HR. Yeah. Is that gonna be a problem <laughs> for trackable. HR? to keep up with? Uh, well, um, we can make that work. However, I want to get clarification on if someone has uh, no sick leave available. Then it goes to a case-by-case -case basis with the chairman. Okay. Then it'll be on one-to-one -one basis. So. Well, and you treat the same way you do it now. What are you doing now? Case-by-case -case basis, uh, right? If, if it's a, you know, if they've got the test, they test positive, I sign. All right, so I would say do the same thing, case-by-case -case basis. Okay. He, he will still approve that. 
Um, I just want to refer to Chip that that would not be inconsistent, you know, treating the employees differently. If, if they've exhausted their sick leave, then, uh, you know, the sick leave is theirs when you get sick. Does sick leave run days. run fiscal year or calendar year? <coughs> calendar year. Hell, if they ain't got no sick leave, and just, now I ain't got feeling sorry for them. <laughs> you know, we're just in February. <laughs> All right. They'd have to take an unpaid day. All right. I think we just let. I think we we'll leave it up to you. I'll use paid uh, vacation. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, we have a motion and a second. We'll try this. If we run into problems, I'll, I'll be polling y'all. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, uh, position of uh, executive administrative assistant, county <coughs> administrator, or if you want to call it county manager, uh, we included a job description in your packet of this. I've been asking for this for some time. Uh, with these Maudlin and Jenkins recommendations, now we have 10 departments as multiple recommendations. I, I, uh, I can't do it all. We're so big now and it's so much. Uh, we're the largest county in the state without this position. And I'm pushing for it, and I'm opening it up for discussion, and hopefully see how y'all feel about it tonight. So, with that being said, uh, I'll, each commissioner can tell us their opinion uh, if they want to look at this. Uh, I would like to run the advertisements for it. us. Decide tonight salary range. It'll be based on qualifications, and. Uh, I think my question to ACCG was what was the highest population county that still does not have a administrator slash manager? I was told Walton County. And I said, well, what's the next county? And it was like 28,000 population. And we're 100,000. So it's past time in my opinion. And with that, I'll ask y'all's opinion. So are you proposing a full-time county administrator and continue with a full-time chairman? I am. So no change in formal government. Government stays the same as now, but as far as the charter is concerned? Oh, the, it's already, the manager's already, it's not a charter, it's our ordinances that the legislature passed. I call it a charter too, but it's... It's the ordinances that the legislature's passed, and the county manager's position is in there. Walton County actually tried this back in, I'm told, uh, 2006, seven, somewhere along there, and it didn't work out. They, they did not get one that they liked. Um, <clears throat> no, this board still sets policy. But what about the pay? The pay will still full-time chairperson get paid a full salary, and then it's kind of well. As far as the chairman, it would take the legislature, the government. My salary is not set by this board right, or this right, government. Right. We can only make recommendations to right. the legislature. Since since I promised to donate my salary for four years, right. I don't want to hurt the charities. I will look at y'all recommend cutting if I run again. If I run again. Cutting it in half, I, I wouldn't care. But I think I've got a commitment to the charities in this community, mm -hmm. and I've been doing it every two weeks, uh, <clears throat> donating my salary to the Walton Foundation. They, in turn, donate to the other charities. Uh, I would like to honor that obligation through these four years. This will not be a civil service position. This will be a one-year contract only. And if they don't work out, then you can do it again or not try it anymore. I think he'll pay for himself or herself the first year. 
We're missing out on multiple grants in different departments. I was a private citizen. I'm just now learning about grant applications and stuff, and uh, we've made a huge one on the water infrastructure. Don't know if we're going to get a dime yet on it, but there's multiple department grants anywhere like Milton was talking about, you know, 30,000, 40,000, 80,000, and, and Walton County is not involved in that. And uh, then there's things like this COVID and handling employees. A true administrator has handled stuff like this before and can make recommendations. All these recommendations from the auditors, he could help me with those. The financial ones I can handle. The personnel ones I'm not good at. Um, and it would take the day-to-day -day operations, political input into day-to-day -day operations county. We're supposed to set policy and procedures and expect that it be taken care of. And uh, for this one year, if this is approved, I'd like to try to prove how valuable this position would be to the county. I don't think anybody has been opposed to a county manager any more than I have been, but Walton County's got too big for one person to run, I feel like. And I've seen some good commission chairmans over the last 40 years, and I've seen some Lulus sitting in that seat. I feel like we've got a good one right now. But what are we going to have in four years? What are we going to have in eight years? And this is a $60 million business now, not counting the infrastructure. It's going to approach 65 this year. 65. If it goes to 70, I'm not willing to have somebody off the street take that seat and set this county back 20 to 30 years. Yes, the cost is a lot. Uh, I've had some people tell me and it's going to be this and then it's going to be a secretary and then it's going to be a car. It sure is. But how much money can it save the county? And I feel like having another set of eyes on a $60 million business is well worth the price and I'm willing to move on it. I will make one other statement. Y'all have been on this board way longer than I have. But I think finding those dormant accounts totaling over $5.2 million, and I'm asking for 200000 I wish you'd give me your trust in that and let me show you what a county manager can do. That money's been sitting there, some of it 16 years, and if I hadn't come along, it'd still be sitting there. And now it's in the general fund, and I'm asking for two hundred grand of it, uh, salary and benefits, and we may have to get him a vehicle if we don't have one or, or whatever. Um, but I think I've, I've earned the uh, reputation of looking after the county and I feel strongly this is something the county needs and I'd like y'all's support in seeking it out. Further discussion? Is this something that could wait till the next budget cycle? I really, no. I, 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 uh, I need a decision on it. We have one candidate that I wanted in private business, I would have hired him when he was let go from Newton County. And Kirkland pointed out, we're in government and we're supposed to put it out for all people qualified. <clears throat> and he was right and I was wrong in that. But. The judges have proclaimed how great he is. The department heads over there, the department heads here that have worked with him. So he's only one. There are candidates out there. And, um, um, you know, Lee, when I see something in need, I don't like to put off. Uh, we found the money, we put, uh, $16 million back in the general fund last year. We have, these departments have excelled in following and being good stewards of our money. And I'm asking for between $145,000 and $170,000 salary job 
for 12 months and uh, we can afford that. We gave almost, uh, I don't forget how much it was total Milton, what was the total pay raises to the employees last year and we're not gonna have to raise the millage rate in doing it. Uh, we've been managing our money well and this position will pay for itself. I'm convinced it will. And I would like the authorization to go ahead and advertise it and start the interviews once the, ever how many days we have to advertise it goes, 14, and try to get them on board by March 1st. Uh, we just got these reports, the second round of the audits. Uh, they can help in the budget process. An experienced administrator, that's part of his job description. <coughs> And I'd never done a budget like this before in my life till last year. And I want to thank Kirkland. He helped walk me through the budget process. Uh, government is different than private enterprise. In, in, and uh, the county digest is increasing rapidly. And we need, we need to get on top of this. Um, so with that being said, I'm not going to make a motion to prove this job, but I would like for one of y'all to, and let me, let me move forward with it. And if it doesn't work out this time next year, you know, I'll admit it didn't work out and we didn't need the position, but I sincerely urge that we do this. Mr. Chairman, I call a question. Me. Second. <clears throat> I make a motion that we approve the commission chairman to go ahead with the accepting applications for the county administrator and get with HR set. I, I'll leave that up to them how long we need to set. It's 30 days, 60 days, I don't it, know. It's 14 days they've already done. The, 14 days. And I need for you to give me a salary range. I'm requesting 145 to 170. <coughs> uh, that's what I've been told is the pay range for this position. You have to do a range based on Yeah, we need to go at least to 175. I'll, I'll, make my, I'll put that in motion. We'll go from one uh, range from one. 40 to 180. Okay. I'll second that. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Okay, discussion. All right. Okay, you said 145 to 170. And we went I said 145 to 170, and he <laughs> said 180. <laughs> he said 140 to 180. Okay. We're not going to pay them any premium unless, okay. unless their qualifications and where they work before okay. justifies it. And I'd be glad, Kirkland, you'd be a great one to sit on that interview committee. That was my next question. Who's going to sit on that team? I, I would love for <laughs> you to. All right, one more question. You mentioned one-year salary. So that means they run through they run through January 31st of 2023? Well, do, do 11 months. what we will do, we will budget renewing their contract, and then it'll be a budget amendment if we don't. If we hire March 1st like I'm wanting to, okay. it, their contract to go from March to March. But we'll take care from now, March 1st, to the end of this budget year out of our surplus that's in the general fund. And then we'll budget that position the next budget year. And it'll be a fraction budget every time doing it in March. But you can't always hire people exactly right. at year end. Right. Okay. So, all right. With that said, any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right, Lee Bradford is opposed. All right, the last thing I have on the agenda for discussion, uh, we were donated a large tract of land in Walnut Grove uh, by a very, very generous donor. Uh, and we're looking now at 70 acres beside it. Uh, to end up hopefully with 230 acres for a park for Walton County. It'll be the largest park Walton County's ever undertaken. We've got uh, no conceptual drawings. We're actually uh, in the process of putting out the uh, request for designers to give us bids. Uh, amphitheater, uh, the full everything. And uh, 
The problem that I run into is that we have between five and six million in our splash funds for parks and recreation. And I started getting estimates on what other counties have done on this size and how much it's going to cost to do this project. It can be between 25 and 30 million to do this project. Uh, the ball fields, the splash park, the gymnasium, the amphitheater, uh, it will be a, a true event center for Walton County. And I want to not piecemeal it, do it as splash funds come in over the next years if we keep approving splash. Yeah, I can do five million and do one little phase, and then we wait five, six years and do another phase. And by the time we get through with this part, the first phase is wore out or outdated. And this Public Facilities Authority can be recommended by us to our legislature to form, which would allow us to bond and do this whole facility. Now, a facility like this is in the public need, but myself, my financial background, there's no better time to bond money than right now at these low rates. We're not going to always see a 1.81 fix for 30-year rate. Uh, so I would love for this board to make a recommendation to form this public facilities authority. And it would give this board and future boards tools so when something like this comes along and they want to do uh, four soccer fields or something and they don't have the money, they can bond it and pay for it over the term of the bond. And now you can bond 10, 15, 20, up to 40 years, I've been told. But we, I like the 30 year for us. But um, and we could easily pay for it with future splash, or we can pay for it uh, through our general revenue funds. So uh, opening that up for discussion among you, I've, I've briefed a lot of you about it, to be thinking about it, and uh, want to get feedback and hopefully a recommendation so I can call Bruce and after Chip forms some sort of language for it, uh, turn him loose on it. So. Mr. Chairman, this Public Facilities Authority, it would, we'd be able to build anything that's allowable under the splash. Uh, no, it, it'll, it's, it's what it says. It's uh, public facilities. It's only for public facilities. Splash, roads and bridges is part of splash. Uh, whatever <laughs> is proposed for splash has different categories. Park. Parks and Rec is a big part. Uh, one particular splash had a jail as part of the splash. Uh, this is specifically, and it will have members of this board on it. I don't know how the makeup is. It's determined by the legislature. Uh, and then a couple from the different cities, most likely. But if you wanted to build a animal control, new animal control facility? Um, uh, we'd have to check the language. You know, it's very specific as, as to what you can <coughs> borrow if for. If you to build any number of projects, we'd have to look on a case-by-case case as to what particular building would qualify. But generally, public building... Uh, qualify. Qualify. All right. And... Um, <coughs> This is not a David Thompson new idea. This is uh, what a lot of your uh, counties use to see a project through. All the times past, we've been doing it as it comes in, trying to, you know. Uh, this is going to be such a huge, this much land. Uh, it would have to be done in multiple phases over the next 25 years at the rate our splash is coming in, uh, or we can do it all at one time and pay for it over the next 25 years. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. how, does, how does this authority differ from the IBA? The Industrial Building Authority. How does it differ? It is, it is 
its specifications as to what it can loan bond for. Okay. It is a tool used up there for the counties when a special need comes up and the election is two years away that they can go ahead and bond and take care of that need. Now the industrial building authority is for industrial buildings and jails. Uh, <coughs> this will be for public buildings, public uh, facilities, not industrial facilities. And the JDA that I'm sitting on, they bond Facebook and Takeda and we'll be bonding Rivian. Uh, so are their actions going to be ratified by this board, or how will they have oh, yes. to do the it? Oh, yes. The board has to recommend it, and then they ratify it. Yeah, the board, so what the process would be to create one would be that you're asking that the, the, the Representative Williamson, for instance, would, would, do the, uh, would drop the bill, but he's not going to do that until, until this board asks for it. I think it's a great idea. I mean, we put $16 million in fund balances last year. The county's in good financial shape. Our residents deserve, uh, and the children in this community deserve a, a, a fight, you know. Well, there will, be, there will be other projects as we're growing. Uh, the project down at South Circle that's finishing up, close to completion, they're asking for some paving now around the lake. but. Uh, uh, we got to see how the budget ends, but uh, it's a four and a half million dollar project, and it wouldn't come out of the ground if we hadn't accumulated sposh funds to do the project. Well, the way building costs going up, those four and a half million dollar projects are the thing of the past. I'm telling you, a, a single family house now is approaching three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Everything, uh, inflation has hit us, and now interest rates are moving up. If we're gonna do something, I urge strongly that we go ahead and do it and tie the rates down and at least bank the money uh, on a project if you're gonna do it. If you wanna wait another until we, you know, till the budget comes around or wait another six months, then you, we've already had a 45 point basis point since we bonded the jail. Uh, we will be looking at Hard Labor Creek down the road and Going forward with that, that 45 basis point on Hard Labor Creek now has cost the Water Department $460,000 more a year in interest, if just by waiting. And uh, we still hope for some infrastructure, and that's why we're waiting. But uh, when you're talking these type dollars, time is money, and we're missing a window on historic low interest rates. And if we can tie these rates down for 30 years, I'm suggesting strongly we jump on it and this authority will be, be one, two, we can do this project in Walnut Grove, do it all over two years, open it up to the public and everybody can enjoy it. Uh, a 230 acre facility with the amphitheater and all the amenities that we can put in that would be a feather in our hat and um, I had no contemplation I'd be looking at something like this when I ran for office and then this land just got laid in our lap, uh, which was one huge gift in this day and time. So, so backing up, has it, there hadn't been a motion, there's been questions, correct? I think, uh, Chairman, uh, uh, Jeremy Adams. Okay. Now, I'll make it a motion. I think it's a great, great idea. I think it would be something worth moving forward with. I mean, we're we're forming the. Well, this board has to prove, really, before this authority can act, and then we have to guarantee. This board has to approve, guarantee, and pledging our property taxes, even though we're hoping it comes from Splash. No bonding takes place 
without this board pledging the property tax base of this county. And that's how it works. Nobody in New York is going to loan the people in Walton County a dime unless they can know they got the tax and the authority behind it. So, uh, and is that a motion, Jeremy? Yes, sir. We have, we have a motion and a second. That was a quick second, Tim. You're bad about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, any further discussion? Those in favor of forming this public facilities authority and uh, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Oppose. Aye. Aye. And we have Kirkland and Lee. Is that That's correct? That's correct. Yeah, I'm just concerned about another level of government. That's my only concern. <clears throat> All right, all right, and I vote yes, makes the vote five to two, right? All right, we'll move forward with that. Any announcements? Do we need to go to executive session? Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even get to call a vote on that one. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you all. Thank you all for coming tonight. Ha, ha, ha.